Today, Chevrolet is one of the most recognizable and esteemed car brands in the world. This is the full circle story of one man's journey from riches to rags, how Louis Chevrolet went from famed car racer and entrepreneur to poor factory worker for the very same company he himself founded. Louis Chevrolet is remembered for his adventurous spirit, contagious passion, and risky business ventures. Yet few know the true tragic story of Chevrolet and the way his life turned upside down in only a few short years. A household name reminiscent of the Chevy Impala, Corvette, and modern cars of today, this video will show you how the man behind the myth, Louis Chevrolet, has cemented himself in history as a pioneer of American idealism, a bold risk-taker who defined American culture and life. In this video, you will follow the journey of one man who founded a company that would change everything, only to lose it all. Born in 1878 in Switzerland, Louis Chevrolet was the son of a watchmaker. His family struggled financially, so they eventually had to move to France while Louis was still young. It was there that Louis began fixing bicycles for people in town to earn a little extra money for his family. One day in 1897, Louis received a job at the Hotel de la Poste to repair one of the first known automobiles, a steam-powered tricycle belonging to none other than William Vanderbilt, grandson of Cornelius Vanderbilt, an American icon and railroad tycoon. It was this day where Louis's love for automobiles truly began and where his dream of coming to America cemented itself. In the years that followed, Louis began designing his own bicycles, including the Gladiator, a design that caught the eye of a manager from Dirac and Company Limited, a bicycle manufacturer in Paris. It was while working there that Louis learned even more about mechanics and design. After several years in Paris, Louis had finally accomplished his goal. He had made enough money to move to America. In 1905, Louis traveled to Montreal and finally to New York, where he worked several part-time jobs in different manufacturing companies until 1905. It was this year that Louis's father passed and he convinced the rest of his family to move to America. It was also this year that Louis took a job at the American branch of Italian automotive company Fiat, an opportunity that would carry Chevrolet even closer to his dreams. And as always, he was ready for the adventure of a lifetime. It only took a few years in America for Chevrolet to discover a new passion that blended seamlessly with his love of cars, racing. After breaking the one-mile world record at the Fiat race, Chevrolet went on to participate in official car races, earning first place in his first car race. With all of this victory came a New York Times cover, newfound fame, and a racing bug that Louis just couldn't seem to satisfy. With his impressive strength and desire to push the cars to their physical limits using his mechanical insight, Louis soon caught the eye of famous automobile specialists, including John Walter Christie of the Christie Company, an automobile manufacturing company. It was there that a new racing car was developed with front-wheel drive. Although not a complete success, this further enhanced Louis's expertise and passion for cars. Amidst all of this, Louis was still doing what he loved most, racing. With the danger and risks associated with high-speed racing, it is no surprise that Louis soon developed the famous nickname, the Daredevil Frenchman. Soon after, Louis would meet one of the most influential people in his life. William Durant, a co-founder of General Motors, caught sight of Louis's racing skills and wanted to take Chevrolet onto his racing team. Soon Durant took notice of Chevrolet's business expertise as well as his racing abilities and brought Chevrolet a proposition to form their own automobile manufacturing company. It was with this partnership and a vision that, in 1911, Chevrolet Motor Company was born. It wasn't long, however, until business conflicts began to arise. With only 500 cars produced during their first year, Durant expressed his belief that producing affordable cars for the general American public would skyrocket the business to immense success. Chevrolet, however, disagreed. He wanted to follow his passion and construct luxury racing cars that could push the limits of speed and power. Without the argument being settled, Chevrolet went on a trip back to his hometown. When he came back, Durant had completely shifted the company's business plan to produce the affordable, passenger-friendly cars he'd always wanted, all without Chevrolet's consent. In a now infamous argument, Louis allegedly told William that he would not sell my personality to you. It is with that that Louis left the company to return to his true love of racing. It was shortly after that that Louis made the life-altering decision to sell his stake in the company. With that decision, Louis swiftly gave up his opportunity to become one of the richest men in America. 
With no more stake in the company, Durand became the sole owner of Chevrolet, which soon boomed with its vast production of budget-friendly cars. Louis, meanwhile, founded a new company with the money he had received from the sellout. Called Frontenac Motor Company, Louis soon put his energy into producing the cars he had always wanted, racing cars that dominated the tracks with their speed and power. With the Great Depression looming in the distance, however, how long could Louis truly hold onto this idea of success? In 1922, one of Louis's brothers, Gaston Chevrolet, tragically died in a racing accident. This incident tore Louis apart, and he swore he would never race again. He decided to put all his energy into his business ventures and began to work on designing a prototype for a passenger car. Unfortunately, however, his investors for the design had to pull out, and Louis was left with no profit and all the production costs. All this debt with no incoming cash left Chevrolet with only one depressing option. He was forced to file for bankruptcy. Despite this setback, though, Chevrolet still had a little more drive left in him. With his brother Arthur, Louis founded the Chevrolet Brothers Manufacturing Company, a company aimed to develop motors for automobiles and aircraft. Distribution expanded, and the company was picking up speed, until everything began to crash down yet again. With the onslaught of the Great Depression, the brothers were forced to close their joint company, all while Chevrolet Internationals skyrocketed. Poor and jobless, Chevrolet struggled for years before making a decision that brought him ironically full circle. He was forced to work a factory job at the very company he had founded years before, Chevrolet, working as a simple mechanic on an assembly line. Instead of being held up as a picture of fame and genius, no one paid Chevrolet any special attention. He was a poor laborer with his glory days behind him. This became especially true when Louis developed atherosclerosis and his health declined. He eventually died at the age of 63 from a heart attack, left in the wake of a company that had outlived him. His brother Arthur tragically killed himself only a few short years later. In the wake of these tragedies, Chevrolet Motors boomed. Their popularity reached a peak in the 1950s and 60s, with models like the Chevy Impala and Corvette topping the production ranks and breaking the world record of most cars sold in one year. With Chevrolet's immense success, much of the life of the man himself has been lost to history. It remains one of the most tragic and ironic stories that one man can truly go from famed star to forgotten mechanic. Ultimately, is riches to rags as common a story as rags to riches? You'll want to watch this next video about a runaway farm boy that built form from nothing into the largest American car manufacturer in history. Tap the screen now. I'll see you over there.